so maybe six months ago, um, I was answering someone who was asking a question about my experience with uh, the Bull Armory SAS UL, uh, SAS 2 UL, and I told them that, and, and back then I had, shot, I, would, I had shot around 600, 650 rounds out of the gun, uh, and at that time I had had six failures. <clears throat> And uh, I didn't make anything of it because the six failures or 650 didn't bother me uh, because I was very aware of what ammo was hiccuping at that particular time. And the fact was is that most of those happened. I think four of those happened in the first couple of months. And I was throwing all sorts of SD ammo at it. And the majority of that was SD ammo but it wasn't like expensive ammo it was cheap ammo so with the cheaper ammos you always got to keep in mind that sometimes you're gonna see failures especially with tighter tolerance guns you know uh, and we're specifically talking 1911s here because that's my world now um, I'll shoot other things and I have Glocks so I understand the nature of Glocks you know a lot of people they, they tend to think that uh, they don't compare apples to apples. They want to try to always compare uh, grapes against grapefruit, you know, and it, to me that doesn't make sense. You know, for example, you know, in that same conversation, and this was, uh, this was on YouTube, um, a guy responded, and I guess he had a staccato, uh, and so he kind of said, you've had six failures and 650 rounds i hope you're not you know carrying that gun because that's that's abysmal that's bad and i and i couldn't understand i was like what the hell i was like really oh, why are you gonna you gonna try and break that down as to why it's bad um you know uh, so so when people kind of when they respond to the youtube comments i'm, I'm not sure if i come across as like new to the gun world or something maybe because you know I'm, I don't script these videos and so I do a lot of mmms and ahs and and I pause um, but that's me you know, you're getting the real me there you're not gonna be getting uh, any type of fake shit where I'm doing many cuts through video footage to try and make to try and make it seem like I'm competent uh, I know I'm competent uh, I do have a problem with public speaking uh, I know that been like that all my life um, I'm 56 years old now so I don't expect that to change any but part of the reason I'm doing these videos is not just to be an advocate to you know to a uh, that's my way of kind of gaining and gaining an audience and kind of trying to get used to speaking to folks you know publicly so so I understand that but don't let what you see affect your judgment because a lot of times when I do these videos I understand I understand certain things you know I'm not a gunsmith but a lot of the shit that I do and a lot of the shit that you and I do are uh, is not rocket science um, so so what I did was I kind of told him okay I was like you know what I don't like working with raw numbers um, I don't understand why six failures to you in a thousand rounds is bad. So I told him, I was like, this is, this is how I do it. I take my failures and I don't even, I'm bad at math. I'm bad at math, but I do use the hell out of Google. So what I did was I went to Google and I typed, what is the percentage of six of 650 rounds? or 650 whatever right and I got a result so when you type that into a Google search window it it does the math for you so the answer is 0.923 percent I can work with that number that's less than 1% failure rate for 650 rounds and I told him that and I was expecting a reply and I got no reply and then the next day, his post was deleted. 
So it must have made sense to him which is why he didn't even want to argue. And I, I wasn't I wasn't throwing that out there to argue. What I did was I wanted him to kind of, if he knew something that I didn't, educate me. Uh, that didn't happen. Um, so he either couldn't answer and left or I educated him. Uh, and I didn't, you know, I was honestly just trying to get something because I was thinking, I was like, maybe I'm not understanding something. I mean, what's what's the big deal of a of a number of failures within a bigger subset? So, and, and of course, that number changes, right? So, between then, I've only had two extra failures, and I've doubled the round count. So, I now have 1,241 rounds through the gun right and I've had eight total failures so it went up to and so if I put that into Google the failure rate is now 0 0.644 percent so so that's my failure percentage rate of 1241 rounds uh, I can do a lot better with percentage. I can understand that a lot better than some raw arbitrary number that someone gives me. Because you could probably have that same number if I shot less rounds through the gun. So so it's always going to kind of balance out uh, versus me kind of just kind of listening to one guy say that he doesn't want any failures in 2,000 rounds and this guy over here saying, uh, well, three is acceptable within a thousand round period because there's no standard. There is no defined standard anywhere uh, regarding uh, how to judge reliability when it comes to shooting ammo out of your gun. Um, so, got to remember these aren't Glocks. Uh, these are 1911s. They tend to be higher tolerance wise. Uh, they tend to have a higher tolerance. Uh, how, no they tend to have a tighter tolerance um, than the lower end polymer guns. Uh, there are some tighter uh, polymer guns out there. Um, off the top of my head with me owning a few um, is Grand Power. Uh, their guns, I mean, they're European made. They're made for European competitions. Um, Mainly, you know, a lot of, uh, I guess, the owner's experiences with competing, uh, the owner of that company. Um, and so when he builds self-defense guns, he, uh, some of that, that competition type of, of experience goes into those guns. So even though, you know, my, uh, my Grand Power P11 is a self-defense gun, um, because they build all their guns to a certain uh, standard. Uh, some people use those guns to compete, uh, but even if not, th that workmanship is going into their product line. So that means that the, the guns are going to be kind of tight. Um, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with that. That just means you have to kind of sort out what your gun doesn't like. Uh, a gun, in my opinion, whether it's gun A or B or C, should not have to meet like a standard of it has to eat everything uh, that works for Glock because they're trying to make a a gun a, a pretty much a war gun right a gun that you carry in the trenches you can slog you don't have to worry about cleaning it um, you don't have to worry about um, you know keeping it out of the mud or the rain um, nine times out of ten it's gonna shoot even though it's clogged up because by, they purposely built in looser tolerances in those parts so that they'll still work when it's all gummed up with, with mud or carbon. Um, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that, I mean, it's, it's, Glock is just a template for, it's, it's, it sets a standard for a reliable gun as far as a battle gun is concerned. 1911s don't have to be battle guns. The last time they were battle guns were in World War One and World War Two, and yes, two world wars in a hundred years 
you know, the things have changed a bit. So a lot of people, when they buy their 1911s, they're not specifically looking for a bona fide World War II gun. Yeah, they might want it because, um, you know, those are heirlooms and things like that. But at the same time, it's like, if that were the case, then people wouldn't be caring about staccatos or atlases or, or Wilson Combat 1911s, you know. So all of the guns I just talked about are tight as fuck. Um, that's what people want. Uh, they want that, and and it makes for a gun that feels like a sewing machine in the hand. All you feel is it kind of the recoil, but you don't feel like you don't feel the slide moving back and forth. It's so it's so light. You you might see it, but it's like it's just sliding back. There's no there's no lumps or bumpiness, and you know, in 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 that rail actuating against the slide. I mean, the slide actually actuating against the the rails, right? So, so yeah, uh, people want that. I want that in my guns. Um, and to me, there should be a balance between the two. I don't necessarily want all of my guns to be so open tolerance wise, because really, if 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 that were the case, I'd have just a a safe full of Glocks, and I don't want that. Um, if I wanted all Glocks, I would buy all Glocks. That's not what I want. Um, I want my cake and I want to eat it too. And the best way to do that is to have a gun that has a proper balance of being somewhat tight, but loose enough to where, um, you know, dust doesn't choke it. You know, so, um, yeah, that, that, I mean, there should always be a proper balance to things. Um, and I think there is in many cases. I mean, most people, when they buy a higher end 1911, they kind of expect those type guns to be tight tolerance wise. Um, those who buy Glocks, they expect things to be loose and they don't really care about cleaning and things like that. Uh, but uh, I guess my problem is, is that when those guys, when they try and move within kind of the spectrum of the gun world, they take their mentality from one spectrum and they think it applies to the the other end and that shit don't work you know so uh it it doesn't it does not work um now if you if you're kind of in the middle of that spectrum you should expect some kind of uh melding of those two but uh usually going from one end to the other it's 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 not gonna work so um I wanted to kind of share the way I kind of broke down the percentages. I do think it's important for people not to just adopt their neighbor's line of thinking, especially when their line, their the neighbors don't really understand how they're coming out with those numbers. Um, and and if you know, I'm all about learning from other people. And so if I see someone doing something and I ask a question and they can't give me, they can't explain or or kind of give me more detail into it then I know that it's probably something I need to research on my own um, I'm not going to I'm gonna trust but verify you know so and and pretty much that's that's what I did with this guy I kind of just told him I was like okay well this is the way I do it and I you know it was more like a I'll share you what I think is is reliable based on this number that I kind of you know broke it down into a percentage and I should you know the idea was to show it to him to kind of see if I can learn from him or educate him and I didn't learn anything from him because he deleted the post so I guess I I educated him um, I guess so um, I, I, there's nothing wrong with challenging folks um, and I did it in a way to where I didn't, uh, you know, I didn't abuse anyone. I didn't kind of embarrass. I don't think I did because I, the way I asked the question was, it was like I was more embarrassed to kind of ask it. Uh, but uh, I'm kind of upfront in that way. Um, I do that online. I don't necessarily do that on a day-to-day -day basis with just strangers. Um, I do that at my work sometimes. Um, I want to, you know, it's in my quest to kind of learn, you know, and my work is nothing to do with firearms, but that mentality, that mentality carries over everywhere in my life. 
uh, as much as possible. But again, I don't typically do that to strangers in public. Uh, but in the online world, it's kind of a little bit easier to kind of ask those questions. Uh, but anyways, well, we can talk about this all day. Um, and I do tend to ramble. So we're going to end this. We're at 15 minutes. Maybe I'll edit some footage out. All right. Bye-bye.